Hello, slots enthusiasts. How are you? It's great to hang out with you again for another Professor Slots podcast episode and live stream. Uh, today, we're going to be diving into winning slots strategy number six and the concept of combining winning strategies for even better winning odds. That's coming up. Hi, my name is John Friedel. Welcome to Professor Slots, a channel that's all about mastering casino slots so you can win your way to success. Thanks for joining us today, whether you are listening on the podcast, watching this video later, or here with us live on Saturdays at noon Eastern Time. I'm glad you're all here. If you're with us during the live stream, make sure to say hello in the live chat. Let us know where you play slots. And as always, be sure to ask your slots-related questions. Subscribe to, my, subscribe to my Professor Slots channel on YouTube to, to become part of our rapidly growing community of slots enthusiasts. Uh, before I get to today's topic, I'd like to wish everyone listening or watching a wonderful Derby Day. Yes, the Kentucky Derby is, is rescheduled for today, Saturday, September 5th, 2020, if you're listening in the future, um, at 2.30 uh, p.m. Eastern Time, if they're on time. In normal years, it's held in May, but not this year. Also, I hope everyone, uh, those of you in the U.S., have a wonderful and safe Labor Day weekend. Um, so, uh, quick question, is your casino busy today, uh, uh, due to it being Derby Day? It might be a, a little early, um, to tell, but perhaps you've already been to the casino this morning, um, or driven by, uh, I have not, so I haven't uh, been able to check it yet. Uh, by the time, uh, about an hour when we uh, finish up here, um, there'll be an hour and a half, uh, uh, before the actual race. And I won't tell you exactly how far away I am from my local uh, racetrack uh, with slot machines, Racino, uh, but uh, I, I, I might be able to drive by. Um, it's it's, it's uh, kind of tricky. There's some things I have to do uh, for the live stream immediately after the live stream. And so I um, uh, should be able to get over there. Um, anyway, busy days, Saturdays for me, um, not a day off, uh, even on a Labor Day weekend. Um, so, uh, the, the question is, um, is your casino busy today due to Derby Day? Um, will it be busy on Monday, Labor Day? Uh, these are great questions you should be asking yourself. With 2020 being the way it is, who knows? Normally, I'd ask if the casino was busy on these two days last year. Perhaps you remember. Or maybe you added a busy comment uh, to your gambling records if you went on these days last year. Uh, about, according to my latest survey, not my latest, the one before that, um, according to a survey I did a few weeks ago, 40% uh, of you keep gambling records, 60% do not. I think that's the numbers that I came up uh, came back with, um, and those of you who do keep gambling records, it's primarily. Uh, my best guess is it's primarily for tax reasons. Uh, you really have to once you start getting uh, W2G tax forms uh, in order to get back that those taxes, or at least some portion of them. Well worth doing. It's a mistake not to. Um, and as I help you win more and more, more and more of you. Uh, uh, will want to start doing that, but perhaps you didn't do it last year. Even those who you know heard me make that recommendation of keeping good gambling records, uh, you know, uh, anytime this year don't have records for last year. Uh, and uh, you know, I I always push to um, do more than what the taxes require. Yes, do what you need to have. Uh, I've gone over this in the past, but quickly date. Um, facility, how much money you took in, how much money you left with. Uh, and uh, that's that's what I keep. And then like eight other things, uh, like which slot machines did I play, what comments do I have about the day, uh, and some other things that will help me look back in time and say, you know, last Labor Day was a great time to go. This, this, and this happened. I didn't have any taxable jackpots, but this, this, and this machine, you know, were paying out, and it seemed like this other thing was going on. And then so the next year I can look back and say, you know, uh, should I or should I not go? Uh, and, um, you know, normally that works pretty well. 
But this year with the pandemic, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let's say uh, the logic is this. Let's say last uh, Labor Day. No, no. Let's go with Derby Day. Last year, Derby Day in May was busy. No, no. Was not busy. Let's suppose your local casino didn't celebrate Derby Day in May last year. Then there's really no chance that this year it would be busy. But you probably don't have gambling notes from Derby Day last year, um, unless you happen to remember. Uh, so we can't really use that. But now if it's busy this year on a rescheduled date in September, then you can bet it's going to be busy in 2021 in May again. Uh, even if we still have a pandemic in 2022, it would just be magnificent, right? Uh, the usual that we see. So um, I was at, as I mentioned uh, before, I was at um, uh, Prairie Meadows in Altoona, uh, a few miles uh, east of Des Moines, and it uh, was incredibly busy. Uh, I got there before everybody else. I, I, was it 5 o'clock in the morning? I have to check my notes. Yeah, I have notes. Uh, when I entered the casino. And, and um, uh, actually, do I have notes? That was back in 2004. Um, I, I did keep records, but I don't remember if I still had, if I had the time stamp that I uh, like to put in. Start and end times when I was in the casino. I might have. I might have. But in any case, um, uh, I was there early. I remember I was there early because I parked right at the front. And when I left, it, the parking lot was full and they're overflowing down the down the road to the expressway. Um, you know, all these, it's along I-80 and it's very, very busy. Uh, you know, I-80 is one of the major arteries in the country, um, east to west. And um, when the Mississippi flood flooded about that time, they, they had to go around the bridges that were uh, down on the Mississippi River, and it was just, it affected the whole world, a whole, whole country. So, um, right, so uh, I was shocked how busy it was. I mean, people were bumping the back of my chair because they were just, I turn around, and, it, you know, there's not, not much space between the chairs and, and two rows of slot machines, uh, and there was just so many people. It was like 20 people in between the two rows that I was in, and I'm like, what the heck? You know, and I look out in the open area and it's just packed. It was just, you know, wall to wall people. Uh, and then they had, you know, I don't, I'm not wearing my cowboy hat. I showed it to you last time. I didn't get a huge positive response, but um, it, 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 that wasn't the reason why I'm not wearing um, today on Derby Day, but uh, it affects the acoustics and um, lighting. So never mind. But uh, everybody had big hats. Um, and uh, feathers <laughs> and, um, you know, people had to, couldn't get too close to that as well. Um, you know, because you stand next to each other and you hit yourself with your feather or hit, hit somebody else with your feather or whatever. Um, so, uh, yeah, Derby day, I just kind of wonder how it's going to go today. Um, normally you would know. And that's, that's my point about all these gambling records. Um, uh, I did want to talk a little bit about questions that I'd gotten here at the beginning of the show about questions I'd gotten about the last two episodes having to do with special events, special casino events, and the holiday um, strategy of the n next morning after. People have been asking, well, how do, you want, how do I know if it would work at my casino? Uh, how do I know that it's going to be busy? And, and so I'm going to go over that. But uh, when I saw this, I was astonished how busy it was. Um, and maybe you remember last Labor Day. Was it busy? Uh, or maybe you wrote it down, one of the few people who did. Certainly write it down this year. If it's busy this year, it will be busy next year, right? Uh, so uh, start accumulating notes. Um, right, uh, a journal or something. Um, so spreadsheet, just, you know, write the word busy in the comments column. If you use my uh, uh, the tables from my book, that's all you really have to do. Um, you could add the time that you were there that it was busy and some other things, but, um, you know, just short little notes. Okay. So, um, let's see here. Uh, right. So, um, yep. Uh, so 
uh, so if you've been discussing, <laughs> because of what we've been discussing for the last two or three weeks, um, that's why I wanted to go over that. Uh, now that you know all about winning slot strategies number four on special casino events and winning slot strategy number five on reliable holiday patterns, well, now's the time to try these out. Our holidays are approaching. Uh, first holidays after I, I, I spoke to you about these things. Um, uh, here on the live stream. So um, I've had a follow-up question from many slots enthusiasts for these strategies about how to tell if you should go in the morning after a promotion or holiday. And I'll be clear, what you need to know is whether your casino was busy during the promotion or holiday. That's the key question here. So how do you find out if it was busy? And I was too blasé about this. I, I didn't uh, uh, clearly state it for all circumstances. Um, so I'm, I wanted to make sure I covered this again here um, and go a little bit further for those people um, who don't have a casino like where they can drive by. So first, uh, drive, you know, drive, go to your casino on the day of, of the event or holiday. Find out if it's busy. I mean, go in for a second and see for yourself. Now, you if your casino has a big parking lot, not all do. Um, so, some have, uh, you know, you can look at their big parking lot and see if there are a lot of cars based, to what you, based on what you usually see. Um, this can sometimes be difficult to do, however, like at the casino in downtown Cincinnati. If your casino doesn't have a parking lot, but instead a big parking structure where you can't tell from the road how full it is. But slots enthusiasts just like you have pointed out that their favorite casino might not be nearby, that it might take a couple of hours to get there. What then? I, I can see their point. Maybe they won't even go, won't even make the trip if the casino wasn't busy the day before and saves the, save themselves you know, the cost of that trip. So under this scenario, here's my suggestion. Ask. Ask, uh, call the casino the night before and ask them if they're busy. A straight up question. You don't have to tell them you have a slot strategy that depends on whether or not they're busy, uh, that you want to try. Just, just ask because lots of others do. It's not an unusual question. Uh, some people want to know if it's busy so they can go in and have a great time. Some people want to know if it's not busy so that they can go and have a great time. You know, it, it different circumstances. I certainly know when it's jam-packed, I might not be able to get on the slot machines that I want to get on, you know, ignoring all the slot strategies that I talk about. Um, you know, then I'm like stuck with what's left, uh, including the ones even the locals won't play. <laughs> um, so, so of course it, Getting a decent answer from the casino depends on the casino having a good customer customer relations, uh, good com customer service. The casino's phone number is on their website, by the way. An another way to ask is to contact a friend who plans on being there that night. Maybe you have such a friend. Um, maybe the next time you go, you can maybe connect with that person with emails or you know Facebook friend or something. Um, if but if you don't, then you can. You know, speaking of Facebook, you can ask slots enthusiasts within my state by state Facebook groups. Um, I can ask for you. Um, I can ask in every group on the night, on the evening of this upcoming Labor Day. I will do this, but I can't ask about special casino events, right? Because that's up to you. Um, not every casino will have every cas special event. So you'll need to ask um, within your state. So either way, you might get an answer to your question from the comfort of wherever you're at. So, you know, let us know if you do uh, try this strategy in your state's slots enthusiast private Facebook group. And you can find a link to your state's group at professorslots.com slash FB. And that's again, professorslots.com slash FB. That'll take you to my page and they're all alphabetical, every state, territory, U.S. district, and as well as my um, one for international visitors, Dan, <laughs> uh, uh, that might not be state specific if you don't travel to the U.S., um, uh, but uh, if you want to know the one that covers the, the world, um, it, that's also there. It's called Professor Slots Enthusiasts on Facebook. It's private group, uh, private groups. All of them are private. Um, my Facebook profile, uh, 
um, that was just straight up Professor Slots. That's the uh, uh, not a group. It's a profile, so they they're they're not restricted. Um, in any case, not many people use that. Uh, groups are the private one, and people seem to appreciate that. So if you if you try these um, <clears throat> uh, strategies based on special events, uh, holidays, um, then good luck uh, using these strategies. It may seem strange for me to say good luck when um, you know we're talking about skill here and not the luck part. I can't make you more lucky, uh, but you know I I like saying good luck because good luck helps too, right? <laughs> and not something I can help you with. So all I can really say is good luck. Anyway, um, so let's check in with a live chat to briefly say hello. Oh, look at all those comments. Uh, da -da -da uh, thank you, Dave and Lois, for letting me know the audio is good. I may stop saying that, um, but it is appreciated. Um, I have... <laughs> Trust issues. Um, uh, Jesse, hello. Good morning. Um, Paula is here. Hello, Paula. Paula is our moderator today. Uh, she will just look out for, well, I won't tell you what she looks out for, but she takes care of it. Um, uh, just things that we don't want. Um, so uh, Shannon is here. Yes, they did. I, I asked during the, I guess I'm going to call it a pre-show. It wasn't recorded, um, but it is in the live chat. Um, we I get in a few minutes before the show starts and ask questions and check in with people and try to do the, um, the sort of thing I used to do at the beginning of a live stream. But people were like, come on, you're just saying hello to people. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I uh, uh, put that before the show. Um, and, um, yes, yeah, Shannon says I, I had asked her if the New York uh, casinos had reopened, and they had Oh, they will. They will open September 9th. Man, you must be just like dying. Uh, but uh, at, at, so 25% capacity. I appreciate the need for them to do that. Um, uh, and I'm glad that you are soon to have an opportunity to go. Uh, stay safe. Uh, and uh, uh, Dan, uh, he's here from Australia, which is wonderful. Uh, and he plays uh, slots at his local pub. Uh, we have that in uh, lots of states. Um, I have I've covered every state uh, about once a year, and uh, upcoming is what Montana, right? Uh, Wyoming, right? Um, Illinois. Uh, they put a lot of those into the downtown area of Chicago, um, and that's you know one of the things to do. Then they <laughs> then we have some illegal ones, um, which people ask me about. I'm like, I don't know what the illegal ones are. They don't have a website because it's illegal. <laughs> um, Shannon says no table games uh, in New York, 25% capacity, right? Uh, or drink service on the casino floor. Yeah. I really do hope. Uh, RSL club. Yep. Sure. Dan. Um, so... Richard says, uh, wise virgin, if you're in the live chat, a uh, special event at Harris, Cherokee. Uh, they're giving it away Monday, giving away $50,000 on Monday from 12 to 4 p.m. Um, one way that, that it's fascinating, some of the marketing the casino does, they're going to give away $50,000. Well, no, no, not to you, but to maybe 100 people or a thousand people so if you want to go you can get your 50 bucks um but there's going to be higher ones than that but it does sound great when they give away fifty thousand uh um uh, uh dollars uh for over a four-hour period um but if you have a crowded casino you have to evaluate every one of these um chip says fire keepers in battle creek michigan Shows on their website the percentage of slots being used at any time of the day. This helps to see how busy they are. Um, sure. Uh, and, and a lot of the things that I talk about, um, you know, I, I get some pushback. Uh, I get some uh, questions. Uh, and there's one person who in Nevada who, you know, they think they know the gaming industry, and sometimes they actually do. But one person was saying, no, 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 no. there's no way to, to uh, tell if a machine is idle. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, and right there, you know, I, I wish I had known that about Firekeepers in order to give her a link and say, see, 
See, <laughs> they do. They do know. Um, um, so make sure you take a look at that. Uh, it might be too late, Chip. If you know uh, to use that service, I don't see that. on I go to every, I go to every uh, website of every casino in the country, the ones with slots, um, once a year, and uh, I haven't seen that. Um, so I must have missed it on Fire Keepers, or it's a new thing. But your problem is. Did you look yesterday? Because if you look at the numbers today and you didn't look yesterday or at any other time, then what's normal for a Saturday? And then you could read off what the num what the number is for today. So you, um, maybe you, well, uh, if you looked at it, you have you have to have two numbers to compare them. <laughs> and and today you can go, but what was it yesterday? I wonder if they have anything from like um, before. Uh, yeah, that is interesting. As I agree with Paula on that. Um, so these are definitely tips that account for today's topic. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, and uh, Jan is in uh, Texas. She didn't get struck by the um, uh, Hurricane Laura, but uh, her casinos did just over in Louisiana, made a sharp bend right at the end there and missed her. Uh, and and she, I thought it was wonderful something she said. Uh, Golden Nugget in Louisiana uh, is closed, and another one um, she mentioned is closed, so she can't go for Derby Day. But, but um, the casino actually is open um, a little bit. Uh, I showed, I, t I talked last time about how the roof got torn off of the hotel next to the casino. Um, last time I think that was, I think that was Golden Nugget. But apparently um, uh, there's a lot of, um, when you have something, a place with a lot of, when you have a place with a lot of power outages, you get um, these electrical crews from other states who drive in, but they need a place to stay and Golden Nugget has offered to stay. Uh, let them stay uh, there. So um, that's that was while they're closed. So that was, I thought, a wonderful thing to hear about. Um, Let's see. Richard says, better to play 4 to 6 a.m. Sunday or Monday. Uh, what's Monday? What Monday morning would be after Sunday night. Is there something special going on Sunday night? Now, if it's busy every Sunday, I, I've been beginning to think, you know, uh, every uh, Saturday morning, every Sunday morning, every Monday morning might be you know, a busy casino might be a good time to go. But is there anything special going on on Sunday? Um, and Monday, uh, yeah, that, that's the question. Uh, Saturday, Sunday would be because it was busy due to Derby Day. So, you know, that, again, this is the question I was just talking about that I'm beginning from all kinds of people. Better to play? On those on this day or that day, and I'm like, see what it's like it's, if it's busy the day before. That's your answer, and there's a bunch of ways a bunch of ways to, uh, to do that. Uh, Dan says all casinos open up in Australia. Um, I am not surprised. Uh, well, and he says also no tax. Um, but I had the opportunity to my first professional job offer was to live in South Wales, uh, not yours uh, in outside of the United States in Great Britain. Um, and taxes are different. Uh, you say no tax, but, you know, there's states here that have no tax uh, for gambling, except it's not really no tax. It's still income. And so you have to sort of do the tax yourself. And then people don't, a lot of them. But they, anyway, uh, let's talk, talk about tax. <laughs> um, uh, oh, hey, Denise. Um, welcome. Uh, I know you're late. You said you're late, but um, it's great to see you here. Um, uh, thanks for, so much for joining us. Jo Denise was a regular a lot. Anyway, um, uh, so uh, for those of you who are getting impatient with my mumbling along here, uh, let's get, uh, well, visit professorslots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top tier slot machine casino gambler. Um, and please uh, subscribe to the show uh, if you haven't already done so. Uh, it helps us grow and uh, that um, helps me to be able to continue uh, seriously. Uh, uh, so thank you very much. Um, uh, and that was excellent. Okay, so today's winning slots 
approach is my strategy number six. This method is a little different than any other any of my other strategies. Yes, it has a winning strategy, but that strategy is nested uh, deep within two other winning slot strategies. Number uh, strategy number one, only win immediately, also known as my five pull method, and next week's strategy number seven. Uh, it's a way to choose candidate slot machines. I'll leave it at that. Um, and also, this strategy, number six, has a best practice involved and maybe even a little bit of a tip. So what this strategy is, what I'm trying to present here is a new concept, okay? Winning strategy six is a stratagem. It's a combination of strategies. I go over strategy combinations in my book, Learning to Win, available on Amazon as a soft cover ebook or audiobook. But, um, uh, you know, there I go into detail on this, and maybe I'll just talk about that at some point in the future. But uh, I cover which strategies combine well and which don't. Uh, in fact, I go over every possible combination and point out which stratagems are the most powerful. See, once you carefully and fully learn and experience first one strategy and then do it all over again with another strategy, if you're like me, you, you start to notice you can f fine tune these strategies and use them together. So it's what I do. It's what I do these days when I go to a casino, even casinos I've never been to before. But that's another that's a story for another time. Uh, I think it's something you might be interested in, but i uh, likely to put it into the course. Yeah, all these thoughts rattling around my head. Um, uh, seems like I have a big business. There's a lot to talk about. Um, I'm not one of those YouTube channels where, uh, you know, you go into a casino and you record your play, and mostly you say, ooh, Ah, <laughs> you know, not much else. Um, Brian Christopher's uh, a lot like that. Um, uh, I'm probably not doing him justice on what he provides, but it's not winning strategies. Uh, and so uh, for the first time ever in my video that came out on, uh, actually came out on Friday, but it came out this week uh, on winning strategy number six, um, I didn't talk about them in the video, but on the side next to me, I put in my pictures my videos. These are not someone else's. These are my wins. Now, when I won my 90 taxable jackpots in, uh, I mean, because they were over immediately taxable uh, as soon as I won them because they were over $1,200. Uh, when I won 90 of them, I, I didn't think I was going to have a business. I had an idea in the back of my mind I might have a business, um, but I had, you know, I, I, I didn't post my stuff on Facebook, not very much of it. Um, just, you know, the big stuff that the stuff that was personally exciting to me, you know, winning the car, blah, 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 but <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Um, I was pretty excited, but, but, um, in this video, uh, I put in, you know, uh, jackpots from the high limit area, mine. Uh, I've made sure that it's very hard to tell which, which casino it was. Um, either Belterra Park, I'll tell you, Belterra Park or uh, Horseshoe Cincinnati, um, both of which have new owners. Uh, Horseshoe Cincinnati has two, has since had two new owners. Um, and then I have about three, I think, three or four videos. And these, this is stuff I just happen to collect for my own reasons so I could look at them later uh, and um, never, never had the business really in front of mind. Uh, so I don't have you know, picture of every, uh, all 90 jackpots. I just, these are the ones I have. This is all that I have. Uh, so this one video will be me in a casino, no sound because that's copyrighted material, uh, just showing you my wins. And, uh, it's not going to be a regular thing. There's plenty of other channels that have contracts with, uh, casinos uh, to do that sort of thing. Nobody's in the picture that doesn't have a written agreement to allow their face to be in the video, all that. Um, and so there's everybody else does that. Uh, I don't except this one time. Uh, and uh, again, uh, no sound. Uh, just try to keep it clean.
So uh, some people who I think are just watching that video just to see those <laughs> and not even listening to me. But um, so with this uh, winning, with this strategy number six, um, I'm not trying to turn you into a full-time high limit slot machine gambler. I'll be talking a lot about high, lim high, uh, high limit uh, slot machines, but I'm not trying to turn you into one. I'm trying to say there is an advantage for these some, couple of these of strategies, which are don't cost very much money uh, to to try them out and make the most of them to even optimize them. And one way to do that is pay more money, maybe as much as you might take into a casino normally, and then try it in the high limit room. So that's completely different strategy for those of us who take $20,000 into a um, high limit room and, and maybe leave with $100,000 or nothing. All right. So I'm not trying to make you a high limit slot machine gambler. Okay. Just be clear. Uh, but some winning strategies, as I said, uh, become truly optimized on high limit slots. Why? Because winning means only a few bets of $100, $5 or greater high limit slot machines. Uh, so I'll, um, the, I, I've called this uh, three high limit slots tricks, right? So trick number one, using winning strategy number one in high limits. I'm trying to talk about each of the strategy, tr strategies that you can use to win, and then I'm going to start combining them and do the stratagem. So hopefully I won't run out of time uh, going over this, but, uh, you know, this talking about one winning strategy at a time is... Uh, we, you know, that's what we've been doing for five, six weeks. And we started doing a little bit of the combining of four and five because casino special events are not too different from major holidays uh, in the in the way that you apply yourself to it. There's plenty, it's, it's, it's enough differences to make it two different strategies, but what you end up doing the next morning is the same. So uh, now we're going to start doing more of that combining because this is where the true power is. And I want you guys to know this. So um, I noticed a pattern at medium-sized casinos. I saw that I uh, would win once when I first sat down and then not win anything again for some time. Uh, uh, this winning pattern is my so-called five pull approach or more officially my slots winning strategy number one only win immediately and there's a video and an article out there and it's in the book and i i fully share this stuff uh what i do less of is kind of like the com combinations um uh, this this is it's uh, complicated might take more than eight minutes might may take more than 50 minutes but I'm gonna give it a shot today for this particular combination so this strategy number one uh, takes the five pull method uh, takes advantage of a standard business practice found at many casinos where they provide an initial winning taste my five pull method takes the taste offered within the first five bets then has the player immediately move on to the next machine to collect its taste and so forth so uh, I think the th four portions of videos that I show on the side during um, and, uh, my video for this strategy, which I will put in the uh, video description and in the podcast show notes if you want to care to take a look at it, show me doing exactly this, walking up, putting my card in, putting the voucher in, pressing the button, well, either uh, once because it showed a win, uh, we'll get to that, um, or uh, five times if it doesn't show a win, and if I win anything, even if it's just a cherry, uh, which is not insignificant on a $100 machine or a $25 machine, uh, I stop because that's the taste that we're talking about here, and there's only one. Okay, if you try the 500 pull method, you're not collecting tastes anymore. I just love that i think it was dave omen o odom who i don't know if it's here today um is <laughs> quote, quoted that and i just that's the inside joke um uh, uh so uh what i'm emphasizing now is that it's a great approach uh number one for winning slots uh to playing slots cheaply uh in a high limit slots room for me this was an expensive this was an expensive lesson to learn for you uh, because I kept playing after that initial taste. Um, I, I didn't know about tastes at the time. Uh, I learned about tastes because of this. So I won when I first sat down and then I didn't win for, I think the longest I went was like two hours. 
uh, why I kept playing. I just wanted to see what would happen. In any case, uh, sometimes I, 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 sometimes I do that deliberately. Uh, some early on, I might have just done that just to see, to understand, right? Um, and what what was going on? Oh, okay. So uh, only win in the beginning, and you don't win later. Well, I spent a lot of money on that, but now I know. Now I know. Uh, I took five hundred dollars to each of eight uh, high limit rooms uh, on the Las Vegas Strip on my uh, first trip. Uh, second trip to Las Vegas, uh, and I learned a lot, <laughs> which is don't play in this strip. And Mandalay Bay is the best uh, for the high limit room. They actually had somebody in there. <laughs> um, so uh, so I kept playing. It was expensive. Uh, it was only months afterward that I would look back through my gambling notes, see, gambling notes, um, and realize I had um, how rare it was that I'd win anything after that first taste. Uh, as an aside, don't worry too much about all the money I spent learning my five pull method. Unbeknownst to me at the time, each one hundred dollars spent over three months earned me another entry for the drawing of a car, which I ended up winning. But that's a story for another time. As a second aside, the money I was spending was from significant slots winnings from another local casino that was at the time Horseshoe Cincinnati, where I was successfully using next week's next week's slots winning strategy number seven so the second trick um, is to combine combine strategies into a stratagem so uh, combining winning strategies isn't always easy but sometimes sometimes they fit together nicely i know i haven't yet published a video on slots winning strategy number seven but you can find my article with its full explanation uh on pro my professor slots website yes i have a professor slots website please come visit um, and under uh articles uh at the top sort of menu um if you you know hover your mouse over that or your finger over that um, you'll see a list of different categories. Um, learning, history, I think history and learning I combined, tribal, um, there's there's like five of them. And one of them is strategies. So if you look under there, you'll see my seven strategies plus one more that works for older casinos um, and still works at the newer casinos. So there's basically eight articles there. And this is number six, uh, one called number six. So, uh, excuse me, it's Winning, it's, the, it's the last one, should be right at the top, slots winning strategy number seven. But I also add this, uh, this link to the video's description in the podcast show notes. Um, right, so my strategies, number one and number seven, combined, uh, combined in, combine into a single powerful approach. Basically, I'll, I'd use strategy number seven to play each candidate slot machine up to five times. Uh, according to my gambling record notes, my annual return for this combination of two strategies, uh, stratagem, resulted in a $150, 150% profit over my original bankroll. I found this combination of winning strategies to be the cheapest approach yet to slot machine gambling while resulting in the highest profit margin. Using it at my local casino required... Uh, at the time, Belterra Park, still Belterra Park, but having different owners, Board Gaming bought it. Um, using it at my local casino required only $500 per visit and gave a profit of $250 on most, although not all visits, without a taxable jackpot. To be clear, uh, that's walking in with $500, not winning a taxable jackpot, but leaving with $750. Um, but then... Uh, but this was taking place on high-limit slot machines, on which taxable jackpots are common. So when I, on trips when I would go in and win a taxable jackpot, my profit was far more than $250 over what I'd uh, arrived with. And it certainly covered losses from the few visits where I didn't make a profit. As I'm sure you understand, a single $4,000 taxable jackpot pays for many visits. So uh, I want to quickly check in with the live stream. Um, looks like we're doing good. Um, yeah, I, I know the 11 o'clock is, is uh, oh, your central time. So uh, 
uh, 11 o'clock. Um, Denise is here. It's hard to make 11 o'clock in the morning for her in Central Time. Uh, uh, I had to move it a while ago from two o'clock, from one o'clock in the afternoon Central Time, uh, and I, I'm finding it um, a bit of a challenge too. Uh, I have my newsletter and people have questions, and then I'm live streaming and I can't answer them. And then when I come off the live stream, I've got a whole bunch of emails. Uh, so. Now that I've been laid off, uh, I, I wonder, I wonder about, you know, the afternoon during the week, but I hate making changes. Um, it, people get used to things. We already know what it was like to change once. And I think that was my shot. So I, I think we're going to be stuck with, um, this time, uh, try it for six months or something and then see if it needs to change. Um, yep. Uh, but thank you for stopping by and saying hello. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Lois and Dave say that casinos near them, uh, they're in on Ontario, Canada, um, open September 28th. Uh, so you've got another three weeks or so, a little more, three and a half weeks. Um, maximum 50 people indoors, no table games. Uh, and that's Canada. <laughs> that's wonderful. Um, uh, yeah, so, hmm. People play slots, no table games, right? 50 people indoors, people are playing slots. Uh, maybe I'll get a few customers out of that. Do you have one of my shirts? <laughs> Dave and Lois? I, I hope so. Um, wear it. Uh, so, uh, um, getting back to slot strategy number six, uh, the third trick, the third, the, the third high limit slots trick, um, is, is really the, the S the, the specific thing, uh, maybe you call it a, um, best practice, a tip. Uh, uh, maybe it's what the winning strategy six is. I think it's hard to sort of like separate some of these things. I, I did this when I was teaching physics. If I could explain this and I explain this and, and explain how they fit together, it seems to come across a little better. Um, winning strategy six is all of this, I would say. Um, and the best practice or the tip, um, is about idle slot machines. Um, and then there's well, the best practice is idle slot machines, and the uh, tip is a little spin on it having to do with um, vouchers. So let's get to that. Um, by using these strategies, number one and number seven, uh, yet another approach grew out of them. It's easy, simple, and quite inexpensive, and it's completely counterintuitive to what most slots players would tell you to do. But because they feel this way is the reason why it works. This is not unlike my having, uh, uh, taking advantage of standard casino practices. Uh, I'm not taking advantage of a standard casino practice with this so much. Well, I, I am, but I'm also taking advantage of other slots players who believe in myths, this myth. So slots players will tell you it is essential to check the machine's last play. If it shows a winner, then in general, they say, skip that machine. Don't play it is the general advice. You know, there's a slot machine, it says, in a high limit area, and it shows that it's got a jackpot. Uh, the last play, last thing that happened, shows a jackpot, $40,000. Well, it's, I guess the logic is, well, it's given up its balance. It's all these, all, all these false, false concepts. It's paid out, so now it won't. Um, you know, this is, this is one of the myths that uh, you might see in roulette. Uh, past results do not have anything to do with future results when you're talking about statistics. Business practices, maybe that's a little bit different. So um, so they say, don't play it. Uh, that's the general advice. I say phooey. Uh, I, it's the only time in my life I say phooey. <laughs> I say phooey. Uh, that's proof. That win, that's proof it's a winning machine. Play it. But that misunderstanding of avoiding a winning machine comes from not knowing the concepts of statistics. We have come to a fork in the road, all right? When you come upon a slot machine showing a win, you have a difficult decision to make on how to proceed. The myth says, avoid playing it. My general advice is, play it because the win is excellent evidence of high odds. Then there's the third choice we'll be proceeding with here, using strategy number six. So there's more going on here than a machine which might have high odds of winning. We can use this misunderstanding of the basic concepts of statistics to win jackpots. Because of a myth, a slot machine showing a win has been idle. 
possibly for a long time if it's a large jackpot. Let's use that to win. I haven't given this tip a strategy number. Um, this is my conversation about what is the strategy, what is not the strategy, is the strategy the stratagem, or is the um, you know the strategy the best practice, and then there's a tip in here somewhere. So call it a best practice when playing slots, if you will. If a slot machine is showing a win, bet once. However, it, uh, I did this once and I won on a $100 machine. I saw the win. It was there for, it, it, this is in the book. It was there for three days, two and a half days. I saw it one night, the next night, and the next morning. Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning. And on Sunday morning, I was like, it's been like two and a half days. And I ran right over, put 100 bucks in, pressed the button, won $5,000. And it was very strange to go, you know, I could win if I make one bet. And then going over and making one bet and winning and going, well, that's, well, I'm going to have to do this more before I truly believe it. But that's quite, if it was if it's just luck, that's quite a coincidence. Um, um, and it wasn't because... It wasn't because um, I'd seen this so many other times for small jackpots. This was just the longest I'd seen a machine idle and known it was idle. Uh, and it's hard to make that happen, but this myth of, that's where he's saying, oh, I don't play that one. Uh, you know, it's the only machine, well, it might be the only slot machine I've, I've ever seen that hadn't been played for two and a half days. I've checked these things. Machines are played all the time and two and a half days, yeah. So uh, I noticed, which is what I did. Um, I observe. So um, for this strategy to work, a slot machine showing win needs to have been idle for some time. For example, is the chair moved back from the machine? I mean, slot attendants are always pushing the chairs back in, putting them back in place if they're not bolted to the ground. Um, but if so, if it is out, if so, someone played it recently. Um, why does this work? Uh, casinos that set up their slot machines to offer a taste, an initial taste, sometimes add another business practice on top of that first taste-based standard business practice. This second business practice uh, can cause, can create a quick initial win on idle slot machines if you know what to look for. So one of the questions I get here is, how long is idle? Uh, one, uh, um, one thing I didn't talk about in the video was, uh, Brighton, let's see, Seminole Brighton Casino, uh, if my father and his wife are, uh, watching, uh, but not logged in, they, I went to see them, uh, in Florida, just uh, three hours, two hours, something like that, south of Orlando, uh, and, uh, they, they heard I was doing all this, and I guess it was maybe a year and a half ago, uh, and, um, I just went down and, and I, tried a few things and I figured out this was the one that was working there um, uh, and uh, that it was not just strategy one but also uh, strategy uh, the strategy of idle machines and it turns out that if it was just idle for a few minutes uh, was enough to to bump up that taste uh, to um, you know, several hundred dollars. And, and, and so I, I explained to them, you know, you just go from machine to machine to machine and try to go to machines where no one was just playing recently. And that's enough for them to be able to, um, uh, you know, make money. So happy to do that for them. I think I was there for a total of three hours. They bought me lunch and I flew home. Um, so, right. Uh, and I wrote it all up in an article. Um, Right, where you'll see a picture of my dad <laughs> uh, from a year and a half ago. Uh, let's see. Um, so uh, one loose end of this using this strategy is the question of how long does a slot machine need to be idle for it to turn into a winning slots machine via this best practice? The honest and straightforward answer is, in general, I don't know. Uh, at Brighton Seminole, I mean, I, I know what it is for the casinos I've gone to. Uh, because you can figure it out. So, but I don't know what it is for your casino. I, um, uh, so at my casino, I figured it out. Uh, but like I said, I don't know what yours. But you can figure it out like I did. Just consider my observations. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not spoon feeding you these slots strategies. Okay, you are going to have to do your own work. Um, you know, it's, there's no such thing as a free lunch. It keeps coming back to me. There's no such thing as a free lunch, despite we knowing that there's, 
well, even our free lunches aren't free. Anyway, um, uh, I found uh, more slot machines are winners with this strategy if I attend Belterra Park rather than Horseshoe Cincinnati, even though it's new ownership again and again. Um, but, it, you know, Belterra Park, before it was purchased by Bill, uh, Boyd Gaming, on a Saturday morning, after, usually after a busy Friday night, not early in the morning, just, you know, 10, 10 a.m., 12 a.m., uh, up to noon. Uh, that seems to be a great time, uh, but also before noon on Sunday. So maybe by 10 o'clock on Saturday. Um, and I, uh, for the last two strategies, I've said, you know, it's 7 o'clock in the morning and it's done. Uh, you want to be before that. So this is something else. And um, I found Belterra Park, prior to its current owner, uh, had uh, Saturday mornings uh, and also uh, until noon about Sundays. Uh, and that's because these were the, for th these casinos, it was typically the most extended times when slot machines were idle. But how long does it need to be inactive, you ask? Uh, for my casino, it was about six hours. Uh, that's a long time for a slot machine to be idle, so slow mornings at the casino worked best. But at Brighton, Seminole, Seminole Brighton Casino, uh, south of Orlando, uh, it was only a few minutes. Um, it might have been possible to play it six hours later, but I wasn't there long enough to try. Um, uh, and I'm not too sure that, you know, there's so few casinos in that area and people had to drive a long way to the reservation to get to it. Um, it was always open and always busy. Right. Um, so uh, I'm not sure if if you could find a similar situation to Belterra Park where people were, you know, just not there. Maybe it would have been noon on Sundays, maybe. Um, but I didn't have a chance to try it out. Um, I just know that when I was there, give it two minutes, you know, sit, don't play, don't put your card in, wait two minutes, then play. And that was enough to get something. So, again, I can tell you what I found. Uh, but I haven't been to your casino unless um, I've been to your casino. And uh, soon I'll, uh, soon, the, the pandemic is preventing me from going out more and more. So I'm still piecing together uh, how best to optimize this approach. But another clue comes from my conversation with Eric Rosenthal, and this is the tip. Um, he's a noted influencer in recreational gambling. Uh, we had a breakfast one day with a bunch of other podcasters um, uh, at Foxwoods. Um, he said someone he trusts within a slot machine manufacturer told him that slot machines reset whenever they print a voucher. So this is interesting. That means there's three similar casino business practices, which if you can combine them, makes for better odds than any of one of them alone. So now we've done two combinations, all right? We've combined winning strategy one with winning strategy number seven, or I did. Um, that's some of the wins that I was showing. And then we took these three similar things and combined them and then combined the whole thing. So this is definitely a strategy. All right. It's, it's an example of what you can do if you learn each one of these individually and then start figuring out how to combine them to get even better odds. So first find a casino where slot machines give out tastes. All right. Whole separate tasks. That's Winning strategy one, look it over. Second, play a slot machine showing a win because it's likely been idle the longest. Or if none are available after hours of low attendance at the casino. That means you need to know your casino. You need to understand when it's busy, when it's not busy. All right. During the summer, during the winter, holidays. Well, we already talked about that. Um, and third, check the machine credit interface area. Was a balance printed out? as the last action on the machine. It'll it'll say, is it a zero balance or was it not a zero balance? And then it won't say printed, but it'll say, well, the last thing in there was a zero balance. It's not in there now. Or the last thing in there was a certain balance and it's not in there now. So someone printed it out. But, you know, often enough people play a slot machine until they, you know, only put as much in as they want to bet and then they zero it out. So look to see if the voucher was, printer was activated. Um, and also, you know, my usual caveat to all this, I've added next week's winning strategy number seven. But the whole point of this powerful combination of strategies is that it, is that it doesn't much require much money to try out, not to be too, um, uh, not to be too blunt about this. Why wouldn't you try out this inexpensive stratagem in the high limit slots area? But carefully, of course, remember the golden rule. The only money you should 
bring into a casino is that which you had, which you can comfortably afford to lose. Even walking, I remember how hard it was to walk into a high limit room the two, the first two times I did it, with like ten years separation between the two. It was just hard, you know. And then you had the whole, well, I'm going to put five hundred dollars into a machine. Gee, I could, how much you know? That's a lot of money, you know. Those feelings are, are, natural. Uh, sometimes I think slots, high limit slots players are like trying to do something unnatural. Um, you know, who, who puts $3,000 into a slot machine, $2,500 into a slot machine, you know, eek, you know? <laughs> but, but that's what high limit uh, players would do here. This is not high limit play. Like high limit players. know. this is $500. If you can't afford a $500 bankroll to try this, then that's no problem at all. You can do the same stratagem on low limit slot machines, right? So, you know, I was playing mostly five or ten dollar um, max bet in high limit. I mean, right? I was spending a hundred dollars. I would spend twenty dollars five times if I didn't win anything, and I'd spend a hundred of my five hundred dollars trying out one high limit slot machine. Okay, max bet, ten dollars, um, or. Yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, so it was about a hundred, $125, uh, each machine. If I went to five and I didn't get a taste or got a taste in the last one. Um, so that, so if you have a hundred dollars, that's more than enough to play a $1 denomination slot machine at max bet. Right. And you can play quite a few of those machines, five bets, max bet. And, and that's the idea is once you've, you know, don't, Start with high limit. That's the other thing I want to mention. Don't start with high limit. Start with not a penny machine. They they pay a lot more on those. A quarter machine, one cre- one one credit, low lowest possible number of credits on a quarter machine. You know, spend five bucks, and on a bunch of different machines, playing each one five times, um, and and see if the casino gives out taste. That's your first task, and then you add these others to it, and then when you you know, or you can just stick with a one dollar machine, or you can you know play a twenty five dollar play twenty five dollars on quarter machines. It's the same thing. Um, uh, profits will just be scaled down, and you you want to start with something very cheap to make sure that this does work uh, at your casino. So I'm going to switch back over to live chat. Uh, see what questions you might have. I saw some activity over there. Um, hey, Dave's here. <laughs> can I call you Mister uh, Five Hundred Pool, or, or is that too insulting? <laughs> Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I try to apologize to people and not, uh, uh be too smart. Um, if they've had a little bit too much to drink last night, <laughs> so you just stated, um, Hey, Nigo is here from, uh, Hawaii. Aloha. Yeah. Um, so yes, please. Uh, um, as Joe says, uh, please hit the like button, like button, um, and, uh, subscribe as well. If you haven't already done so for those of you, many of you in the live chat have already done that. But, um, uh, for those of you who are watching this video later, uh, please subscribe. It helps us grow. Uh, and being laid off, uh, I have a certain amount of dependency on being able to continue on you pressing a button. And uh, for you on the lives uh, on the podcast, uh, which is really my biggest audience at the moment, um, it's climbing a lot because people come from YouTube or wandering on over to the podcast and, and see I have 106, 100, 506, I think the next one's 107 episodes, you know, most of them an hour long uh, to, uh, you know, from the last two years or so. Uh, and they seem to really enjoy that. And my numbers are just r- skyrocketing. Um, and, and that's my best guess as to why. So, uh, uh, those of you on YouTube, um, I have a website, I have a podcast, I have a book. Um, I don't really have a big ticket item. Uh, the book is, uh, 70% taken by the manufacturer, the, the publisher. Uh, so I only get like less than five bucks each one. So it's, I'm not out for the money, but I do need to, uh, be able to continue. I'm going to have to, uh, make this a, uh, profitable business. Um, so I'm working on a online course or two and, um, some of the consulting that would be available and it's a sort of a package and I, I'm working on getting that together. It's laid off about a month ago, um, six weeks, seven. Anyway, don't like to think about it. Uh, uh, July 24th, the last day as an aerospace engineer, uh, with a low six figure income. 
and now I don't have that. So, uh, yeah, I've been working on this, and and lastly, I've been working on this business for about five years, and it was just about ready to monetize, and now I have to monetize, and this, uh, I I do. So, um, right, uh, Dave asks about Mexican resorts. I haven't really gone, uh, unless you mean New Mexico. I haven't gone outside of the country very much for any of this. Um, Bruce says I have used these techniques, and they work. Yeah, uh, some of these are uh, just my explaining what I've seen other people do. Um, I've tried to add to them, I think significantly add to them and show how combined things. And um, so, yeah, I'm not in, the inventor of a lot of these. I'm the explainer. My job is to explain. Um, and uh, I think the only person who likes to talk about them because other people are like, you know, this is just me. I'll tell my cousin and that's it. And he, you know, he won't tell anybody, I, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, but me, I'm telling the world. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, do you use the goodness ratio with this strategy? Uh, also you can, uh, there's a bunch of ways to combine it. I find myself not being able to combine, you know, more than like five or six. Uh, but if you are, but yes, you can. And, it, and really all the combinations, they get to be a lot, you know, I would, I would combine what that casino seems to suggest you should combine. It, um, you know, uh, yeah, uh, that's my answer. Um, and so question was asked for Bruce. Uh, let's see. Chip says, okay. Uh, do I have a, a Patreon? Um, I have an account. I haven't set it up. Um, uh, question is, you know, I'd like to give extra, uh, for two, I would like to give extra to someone who joins the Patreon, but right now there is not one. Um, I do have a opportunity to tip, uh, which you can find on my website in the article. Um, uh, if you get off the main page on the side, it says tip the professor and, uh, feel free to use that. It goes to PayPal, uh, and you can make a donation. Uh, it is not for services, however, uh, you know, the, the services I offer have a fixed rate, and that's what those, those are for. But if you would like to help out the show, um, uh, there is a PayPal. Uh, tip the professor on what's called the sidebar of any of my articles at professorslots.com. Uh, looks like we got, yeah, good luck, David, at, at Firekeepers. Uh, Chip also goes to Firekeepers. I have also heard good things in the morning about, um, recently, about uh, early morning at Firekeepers is really good in the high limit room. Uh, at, if you few joined Michigan's uh, slot, uh, Michigan Slots Enthusiasts private Facebook group. I think you might see the same thing from some of the people there. People there. Um, hi, Marie. Uh, <laughs> uh, welcome. Well, everybody, welcome the newcomer. Um, okay, so uh, I'm about a minute over, uh, and I, uh, you know. Watch more of my videos to improve your slots gambling performance. Have fun. Be safe. Make good choices. Happy Derby Day. Happy Labor Day weekend.